Hi, I'm Alex Borman and this is a video looking at how we can develop and share our resources with students um, to give the opportunity for them to make their own individual personalised journeys through our modules and, and through our learning materials. Um, not creating new resources, just sharing them in a different way. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in and show you um, the idea that I've, uh, I've used with some of my students over the last year. So on screen, um, I've got my example from a module I taught last year, um, and it's um, a 12 week uh, module so delivered over a semester with a number of topics that are covered. Um, this is an engineering um, mechanics module for the first year, um, all shared through OneNote. Um, so what we've got in every um, heading, we've got a series of um, subheadings. So we've got some lecture slides that I've used. Um, some worked examples that are not solved initially. I'll go through and solve those with the learners um, in, in class. Um, some lecture notes that, again, um, not put together for this. I've delivered this module previously and shared these um, through the VLE. So I'm just organising my materials in a different way. Um, and then off to the right hand side, we've got some videos embedded that um, were made in, in previous years which are just um, short five, ten minute videos that capture the same information that's in the, um, the lecture notes here. Um, and then some practice questions and work solutions to go alongside them. So everything in, um, in, in the workbook, all, all the different topics are laid out in the same sort of way. Um, we've, we've, uh, at the front, we've put a, a nice introduction We've given the students a study plan to tell them if they're working through this, if they're a full-time learner, this um, workbook being from last year, if they're a full-time learner, broadly speaking, these are the dates when um, the, the different topics, the weeks when the different topics are going to be introduced. And they can start to work through the material as they choose. They don't have to engage with all of the material because the things in the lecture slides and the lecture notes and the videos are all going to tell them the same thing but in different ways. The worked examples and the tutorial questions are going to be of a similar nature just on slightly different um, topics, different numbers. So students can engage with whichever one of those resources suits their learning style best um, for the particular topic they're covering and they might choose to engage with forces in a different way to the resources they engage with in moments. It's up to them how they navigate through they're still going to have to work from the, the beginning to the end, but which bits they actually choose to look at um, within that, that they can navigate through. And some will be, they'll be guided to um, during the course of some of the lectures as well. So let's look at how we actually did it. So I'm going to create in OneNote. Um, when you open it, you can add a new notebook. And I'm going to give this title of example. Oops. So that will then create a blank shell. Um, and what I'd suggest um, when, you, when you get that blank shell to populate, there's going to be no um, headings and no subcategories. Um, I created a, a template um, heading that with all the subcategories laid out and then copied that multiple times just so that I'd thought through beforehand before I started populating things exactly what I wanted that to look like. So you can see we've got a section, I'm going to call it template. And in my template section, I might have a series of different pages. So we might have our lecture slides, lecture notes. We might have um, our practice questions. We might have some video resources. So once we've got our template for our um, for, for the majority of our pages, um, I'm so I'm saying for, for every single section, I'm going to have those three categories. 
I can then start to copy my section. So I'm going to copy my section by going to move, right click, go to move copy. I'm going to copy it back into the example workbook and I'm going to copy it. And that's probably the most time consuming bit for you to, to, to have the manual interaction with because every single section, every single heading, you're going to want to do that again. And you get the idea. You can then start to rename some of these. So I might call this topic one um, forces topic two free body diagrams. Then once you've got your um, your headings in place with your subheadings, your subsections in, inside, you can start to add content. So all this content is already things that I already had. So for instance, I've got another um, folder open here. I can just go into my folder. This is actually an electronics module that I haven't made the workbook for yet. I'm in the process of doing that. Um, so I can drag a file into there. And it will say, how do I want to upload it? I'm going to insert as attachment, I think. Um, and what that will allow is that will allow me to double click and open the live power, uh, the, the, the PowerPoint slide, um, which is opened off on the screen. So all the students can access everything that they might want to. So if students were then to double click that, they'd be able to open up the PowerPoint in their own um, in their own version of PowerPoint, it's embedded within the, the document. The other thing you can do if you have newer files, so um, the one I dragged in was a .ppt, an old version of PowerPoint from 97 to 2003. I've got a newer um, revision file here that's a .pptx file, um, it's the latest version. If I were to drag that resource in, I've got different options again of how, sorry, of how I might want to share the file. Um, I can still upload as a OneDrive link or an attachment as previously. So last time I uploaded it as an attachment. Um, but if I insert as a printout, this second file, you still get it there sat at the top, but it then converts everything to a PDF so it appears in line in the, um, in the actual lecture note page as well in your workbook. So if you're using the latest version of PowerPoint, PPTX, um, then you're going to be able to um, insert as a PDF file. And that works the same with Word documents. It works the same with, obviously, PDF files. E everything drags in, as you'd expect. There you can see I've now got the whole PowerPoint shared. And I can zoom out on that. Um, and I can... If if you're working on a tablet or a, a surface, you can then annotate around the edge if you want to with um, with the pen. There are some basic drawing tools as well. You can annotate on your your computer if you've got a um, a tablet to make it a bit easier to to annotate around. The other thing you can do now I've got my notes. I can insert things like links to to online videos or other images, other files that I can branch off from that. So I could insert um, a word document. Here we've got a study calendar inserting as a printout again as well. That's going to drop it at the bottom, but I can drag it up to the top. Cut it and paste it again. There we go, drag it to the top. Um, so when students open that page, they'll be able to see the PowerPoint and they'll be able to see the Word document alongside. Um, and you can annotate around all of that, as I say. The other thing you can do if you want to um, put videos alongside, let me get a video link. So on YouTube, if you um, copy the link from any of your videos, it might be a video that you've made, it might be a video that you have um, found that somebody else has made, copy the link. 
you can copy the link address and it will embed the video in there as well so you can see we can have PowerPoint slides Word documents video all embedded together you can spread it across these different headings that the different types of resource so you might have your video resource in the video resources that makes sense let's cut that from there and drop it in there and students can watch that and what you won't see is that's actually opening on another um, screen as well for me and we probably don't want me playing in my own videos that would be weird um, but you get the idea so you, you, you've got all of your resources that you might previously have used in um, a virtual learning environment organized in a different way that allows students to navigate um, through with their own personalized journeys through the resources that you're providing so once you have your notebook looking how you want it and you're ready to share with students um, the last stage is to go up to here um, the share button on the top right um, as you click it um, there's a few options you're going to have there um, now because the the modules that I've been sharing with um, are around about 100 students um, I've turned off the editing mode so you can use OneNote in a collaborative way you can get students to um, work together annotate certain pages maybe you lock some pages so you can right click and you can restrict the um, the editing on, on some pages or some sections um, but there's some sections where you might want them to be um, you know sharing and, and working together collaboratively on a, an activity you can do that because my um, groups are so large I've just shared my, my resources in this way and um, so I've gone to share um, I've changed it to anybody within my university that um, has the link so that every, I, I can just share the link once on um, uh, on our virtual learning environment we use blackboard but it'll work on all VLEs um, so apply that setting and then you just copy the link copy that link to your clipboard and when you go into your virtual learning environment you can paste it and that's then a shared link they can get access to all of your workbook and what that means for me in my module here if I go back into mine when I'm working through some worked examples I'm doing this on a tablet that's uh, plugged into the projector at the front but the students don't have to be able to see um, the screen if they um, if they've got accessibility needs and they, they want to change you know screen sizes or, or colors or anything um, they can change that on their own laptops and be watching my annotations coming up live um, just as an extra tip when I've been working through this there are some specific colors that um, are easier to see than others um, so dip in here you can see I've been using the pink the purple the green and the light blue because um, students have suggested that for accessibility reasons those colors stand out quite nicely if you do change the you display settings on your laptop still um, whereas things like black and red don't really stand out quite as easily for some students So hopefully that was useful to you to give an idea of what I've done with some of my learning resources so that students can navigate their own individualised personal journeys through the, the, the learning materials. Um, do share your thoughts. If you have a go at it, do share how it went and, and student perceptions and things um, in, in the chat. That would be great to hear how other people have interpreted and applied it. Um, and if you're interested in seeing other things that I'm developing and working on, then do don't don't forget to hit um, hit subscribe and to see what else is is coming up on the channel. Thank you.